Hi everyone, this is Jill and it's Friday night again and I'm here to share a stamp set with you and I also thought I would maybe try and show you what I can about making these baby trees um, because I'm getting a lot of questions and a lot of requests for a tutorial. Um, I do want to say that Melissa Phillips did a beautiful video showing how she did this and I watched it about I don't know four times before I tried so sometimes um, to really get in your head how someone does something you got to really watch their hands while they're doing it um, so I watched it I think five times before I attempted to do this and uh, anyway I'm gonna go over that a little bit later in the video so what I'm gonna start with um, for those of you that are waiting for my episode of Friday Night Stamping with Jill um, I created this card. If you follow me on Instagram, then you know that I colored this image up, I think it was last weekend. And this is one of my very favorite winter images to use for winter birthdays or Christmas or the holidays or just anything. I think it's a really, really sweet image. Um, I'm going to show you the packaging and the stamp. It's from Penny Black. And it's a, a rubber cling mount stamp, so it is a rubber stamp, as you can see. And um, I believe it's by Mo Manning. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's by Mo Manning. It doesn't actually. Oh yeah, it does. By Mo. By Mo Manning. So it says it right here on the packaging. So he's the artist, and I really love his images. He has some really neat images. This is one of my favorites. I wish he would do. Um, more of these fairies and maybe he has done a lot and I just haven't seen them all but um, this one is one that he did for Penny Black and again it's called Winter Fairy is the name of the stamp Winter Fairy so I stamped this image onto some Copic um, quality type cardstock um, this is or it might even this might just be the 110 pound cardstock from Michaels um, and I colored it very lightly with Copics and then I use diamond stickles um, to create all of that glitter that you see. All of that shimmer is just from diamond stickles applied very thinly. Um, and I actually, I think it, in parts of it, I used my finger to smooth it out to keep it very thin. So, um, and then because the image is what I wanted you to really see, I didn't want to do too much when I made the card to, to take away from the image. I wanted the focus to be on the image. So all I did was add a little bit of this gold threaded twine. And um, do I have it out here for you to look at? I thought I kept it out, maybe I didn't. No, I don't know what I did with it. Anyway, um, you can get this at any large craft store and it literally is um, a twine that's like a gold thread. And then this Winter Wishes um, stamp is from as you guys know, my favorite winter stamp set, which is Friendship Jar Holiday Fillers. So this is a paper tray ink stamp set. So those are the two stamp sets that I used to create this card. And then I also use this die for the two borders that you see. And the cardstock that I use is a pink frost cardstock that actually has some glimmer to it also. So that is my card for tonight for Friday Night Stamping. Um, again, we're featuring the stamp Winter Fairy by Mo Manning for Penny Black. Okay, so that is my card. Now, back to, <laughs> I'll set this aside. Oh, and I should probably say that I put it onto one of the um, cards, the, one of the square cards from Michaels that's made out of the um, corrugated cardstock. So I thought that went really well with this. So um, anyway, back to the tree <laughs> really quick. So um, if watching the video that Melissa did, if you still have some questions, some of the questions I've been getting is um, how do I trim my tree? So here's one that I started. Um, I actually took a bunch of stuff over to my mom's house the other day and my sister and uh, my mom and my son and I all made a tree. Here's Timmy's. And we haven't decorated them. We haven't put the stars on yet or put them into their little, um, into the little, uh, what do you call this, spool yet. So all we've done so far is just tie on the strips. But this is my son's and he trimmed this without my help. So um, 
he literally, you just tie on whatever fabrics you want, and that's all he did. He just tied them in knots, and he we, we are also using some of that yarn that you get at Hobby Lobby that is the um, eyelash trim yarn, and, uh, and then he literally, what we do is we turn it upside down, and you just trim it an angle up like this, and that seems to be easier than trying to do it this way, I think. And maybe it's because you can start small and then go bigger. So this was his, and I'm going to come back and show you what they look like when we finish decorating them. And then I, I had another idea that I thought I would share with everybody. I went out in my yard. If you don't have straws or you don't want to spend the money to buy straws, um, you know, because they can be kind of pricey sometimes, um, we just went out and we picked some sticks from a bush in our yard and uh, some dead branches. So we're going to try making one with a stick also and see how it turns out and if we can fit it into a spool. So that's just another idea. But here's the one that I started most recently. And um, what I was going to show you guys is this is the width of fabric that I'm using. And this is just an old bed sheet that has been torn into strips. And these are about, I would say, almost a half inch wide or just shy of a half inch. <sighs> oh, excuse me. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, so you can use the, you know, the strips of fabric or pieces of trims and pieces of ribbon. I wanted to show you this gross grain ribbon. I do have some on my tree, but it's much harder to tie a knot with the gross grain. So I recommend using like a satin based ribbon, a thinner based ribbon than the gross grain, because you will struggle to tie that. But you'll notice I also used cotton trims, crochet trims like this. And literally what you're doing to start it is you're just laying the straw down and you just tie a knot. You tie once, pull nice and tight, and then tie again. And then I'm going to show you what I do. I do pull it tight. And then what I do is I fiddle with it to make the two sides sort of face downward. Because you want your tree, you know, all the things to come down towards the bottom. So I just start tying strips of fabric. And you can even pre-trim the ones at the top to be shorter if you want. Um, you know, take three or three or five pieces, maybe, maybe just three, and trim them a little bit shorter. And those would be the top most, most branches of your tree, but you can do it all at the end too. So, you know, I usually, and then I usually add a color like red um, throughout the tree. I space, you know, so that there's either three or five pieces of red. Um, so you can see on this one, where I spaced, you know, the red kind of throughout the tree. And then I also added a red, a red rhinestone to the star. And then the star is made by just a star die cut, put um, glossy accents on it, and then use your, um, your glass glitter. If you have glass glitter, it really makes it kind of look more old fashioned if you want the old fashioned look. But any glitter would work. And I've seen really cute ones with snowflakes at the top too. So there's lots of different ideas you could do for the top of the tree. I think someone used a bell. They hot glued a bell onto the star. So lots of different ideas there. But um, this was my sister Diana's tree right here. And you can see she didn't trim hers as much. She left hers fuller. Um, you know, but you can see at the top where she used some thin ribbons and she cut those pieces much smaller. And then she used a lot of the eyelash trim in hers, so hers really sparkles, you know. And what's fun, did I hot glue this one? I did. I was going to say I could show it, show you what it looks like in the stand, but I glued that one in already. So um, anyway, that I hope that kind of helps. The key really is in keeping these facing, you know, down towards the bottom. And then once you get about 17 strips, 10 to 17, depending on how thick you want your tree to be, then just flip it over this way and trim it at an angle on both sides. Then turn it up and look at it again and, you know, see what you think. And 
a lot of times I have to trim mine three times before I'm satisfied. And you trim it, you kind of mess with the mess with the individual strands to get them to lay the way you want them to lay. And uh, I hope that helps. If you guys want a more, you know, a much more detailed um, tutorial, I can try and do that, but I don't know how good I am at, at giving tutorials. <laughs> and uh, it's, I still, I'm trying to learn how to edit videos. Um, Northwest Lady, I think is the name of her channel. Uh, she's trying to help me. God bless her soul. <laughs> Um, but she told me how she does hers, and I was trying to do it today because I was doing a... I actually did a face-to-face -face appearance for my curating Christmas video that I put up today, and uh, I could not figure out how to link the two videos together. And I didn't run it all together in one because I thought, oh, I'll try editing a video. So it didn't work, <laughs> which is way my cura it's why my curating Christmas video starts with I'm back because I thought that you would see me in person and then I would end up on the video um, behind the scenes showing you my table. But anyway, I couldn't do it. I tried. <laughs> so three cheers for my trying, but I still am not there yet on how to edit videos. So um, anyway, I'm just trying to show you. And you can see like this one's much shorter, this one's much longer, but in the end it's not going to matter because you're going to trim and they're going to end up being the length that you need them to be. Um, so, and you know, mine aren't all perfect either. I was going to show you some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. And, uh, but I just kept trimming until I had a pleasant shape. So that really is the key. Go slow, make it fun. Um, you know, that's, that's about all I can suggest. I was going to show you one other thing. This is what the back of the tree looks like. So all of the knots are along the front of the tree and the back of the tree is smooth. And, um, and then the knots end up getting covered up because you're going to put your little tag. And then I added some buttons on mine. So um, that's about all I can tell you. <laughs> I hope that my showing, you know, these kind of how I do it and how the knots. And you push them. The other thing, too, is push them together as you're tying. Push everything up and together. And then you can adjust and push things up towards the top and add at the bottom. If you feel like there's not enough in the middle or you want to add a different color, you can pull these apart. Like I was doing that, like to insert some red, you might pull this apart and you think, oh, I need more white or more green. Just pull these apart and you can add the color in and then smush them back together. So it's it's a really easy, um, as far as manipulating the, the different ties you have on there, it's very easy. So I hope this helps. If you guys have other questions or you want me to try and film a complete tutorial from start to finish, let me know. Um, I can't do it this week because uh, I'm still I'm still finishing my November deadlines, and my December deadlines got moved up by a whole week. So I am going to be busy for a while getting that stuff done, and that that's my responsibility. I have to do that first. But um, if you guys really want me, I, I really recommend you guys watch Melissa's video several times. And then if everybody really wants to have a, a full tutorial, I could see about trying to do that. Um, certainly, I don't know if I'll get it done before Christmas this year, you guys, but I could try and do it so that in the long run, people feel like they have um, more help. Uh, but please put specific questions in your comments if you want more information, because that would help me in making the type of video that you're feeling that you need. Okay, that's enough on the trees. <laughs> and I thought um, throughout December when I do my videos um, that I would also share a little Christmas um, tidbit, something about Christmas uh, that is important to Tim and I. And uh, I was going to share... Uh, something that we love, and now I can't find what I did with it, which is just the way it goes sometimes. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I did with it. Well, I am going to end this video because it's running too long, and I will share that Sybil had shared that um, 
her and her husband, and I think her sons when they were young, they used to go, and, or I think it was her mom, and maybe it was all of them. They used to go and look at Christmas lights on Christmas Eve. And uh, my son and I do that every year. When Stuart and I, and we used to take Tim and we would go and there's an area by our home where everybody almost on every house in that area puts lights up. And we used to go there every year and uh, drive through on Christmas Eve after leaving church in my parents' house. And we would go and look at all the Christmas lights and sing Christmas carols in the car at the top of our lungs. And Timmy and I have kept that tradition alive. And we still do that every year. And not only do we do it on Christmas Eve, but a lot of times if we're coming home in the evening, we always take the long way home so we can look at Christmas lights. Um, Timmy, when he was little, he just loved the lights, colored ones, white ones, it didn't matter. And all the air, they have a lot of those, um, you know, those air figures like the snowman and the reindeer and whatever. So he just loves seeing Christmas lights and he's 11 now, but he still loves it and we still go. So that's a little um, something about our Christmas that we love. And I, I've seen a lot of comments coming in on Curating for Christmas 2015 already. And I want to just remind everybody, don't just leave a comment that is, you know, hello, Jill, I like your video or your space is really nice. I love getting those. But please share something about the holiday that makes it special um, to you, something personal that you love about the holiday. Because when... People are lonely on the holiday. If they're missing loved ones or they're sad or just having a hard time and they go and read your comments, it makes their hearts feel full when they read things that are special about Christmas. And I think it helps them remember the good times. So just a suggestion, I'm going to get off my, my Christmas soapbox and um, I wish you guys all a happy weekend. Blessings and hugs. Bye now.